Good morning. Oh, that was a good response. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome everybody here in the actual church and welcome all of you who are joining us from wherever you are scattered. We're so glad to have you with us and we would just like for you who are listening or, or watching live stream, if you can write a comment and let us know who's worshiping with us, that would be wonderful. We'd like to hear that. And you know the drill, if you're here, you can record that you are here with uh, your little tear off. And then if you have prayer requests or anything you'd like to share with the pastor or with the whole congregation or those who are on email so that you can get all that prayer. Everybody needs a lot of prayer, I know. So you can put this in the offering plate when it comes around. Uh, last week started the Tuesday morning Bible study. Pastor is telling you all about Abraham. So if you didn't get to go last week, you have another opportunity this week. And for, is it 14 weeks, Pastor? I'm not sure. 14 weeks? Okay. So that's at uh, 10 a.m. here at the church on Tuesday morning. And then you have another movie opportunity. It says movie uh, night, but it's really a matinee. So that is next Saturday, the Jesus Revolution movie. Wonderful movie about uh, Jesus people and the things that God was doing in the 60s. That is at 1 p.m. here at church, September 21st, this coming Saturday. And you're encouraged to come, invite friends and neighbors to come of all ages. It's a very inspiring movie if you haven't seen it. The World Fellowship offering is continuing through September and October, and the mission board has set a goal of $500. So if you are going to make an offering there, you can put World, World Fellowship on your check or your envelope so we know that that's what it's des designated for, and you can put it in the offering plate. Band of Sisters will meet on this Wednesday, September 18th, at the church at 1.30, and we are going to carpool to a tea room to have an afternoon tea. So if you are planning to go, please let Jean Wilson know by tomorrow. It sounds like a lot of fun, and the cost is $16 per person for the tea. Okay, uh, and I wanted to mention the Living Alternatives Banquet, which is October 15th. That's also on a Tuesday evening. And um, we have a whole table of people that are going so far. Uh, you can get more information on their website, and you can sign up. There, uh, Rebecca Hagen is a speaker. And she is going to talk on the issues of teen pregnancy, abortion, and abor abortion bill reversal. And her passion is fueled by some firsthand experience with those issues. And then I want to tell you, I don't know if anybody listens to WGNN, the Christian radio station. They are hosting an audience of one, which is a call to praise and worship at the Virginia Theater. That's on uh, September 29th. Sunday evening at 6 p.m. So it is going to be a gathering of all, all sorts of brothers and sisters in Christ from a lot of different churches in the area. So if you are able to come and praise God on that day, that would be great. It would be great to see everybody. Okay. Oh, and then uh, the meeting that was supposed to be September 18th, the board meeting is canceled. So if you have any concerns or anything you need to contact a board member for, you can do that instead of being at the meeting. Have you ever noticed that when you call or you go online to take care of some business or something and afterwards they always want you to review them? <laughs> they want to say, you know, give you five stars, one five stars or whatever. Or sometimes it's a very complicated same question 50 times or something but they want your review, yeah, or to rate, whatever. So sometimes people want to rate God, and they want to rate it by what his children perform. Have you ever thought about that? How are we doing if people were to rate our God by us? That could be kind of a scary thought, really. Um, the word to glorify God really means to give a true impression or a true picture of who God is. And that's really what you're trying to do when somebody wants, you know, when they want your rating or your review, you're telling what you really thought, what were they like for you. So we can glorify him with our actions, with what we do. We glorify him also with worship. 
at the dedication of the temple, this is what Solomon said, how he glorified the Lord with his prayer. O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in the heavens. There is no God like you on the earth who keeps covenant and shows mercy to his servants who walk before him with all of their heart. Our call to worship is also, uh, it's from Revelation 15, 3 to 4, and it is, if you will, the angels giving their review of God. Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you for your righteous acts have been revealed. Would you pray with me? O Lord God, you are amazing. You are full of majesty, power, and might, but also a God of grace and mercy. And we lift our voices before you today. We lift our hearts to you today, knowing that it is a privilege to come before you, that you are the one true God, and that you are amazing. Just pray, Lord, that you would um, hear our prayers this morning, hear our praise as we lift up your voice, as we lift up our voices to you today, and that we give our lives to you as you have given yours for us. In Jesus' name, amen. The rest of the praise team, I think, probably already here. So if you would like to stand and glorify God or sit and glorify him the same way, it's all right.
Let's keep worshiping. to age you are eternal and you have given us your amazing ancient words that are so relevant so timely so needed for us right now this moment father god help us to cling to every word of your truth help us cling to your living word the son our savior jesus christ the lord of lord and the king of kings Help us always rely on you for each breath we take, Lord God, because only in you do we find truth, do we find life, can we find eternity. We give you praise and honor, Lord God. Help us stand firm on your words, your solid rock foundation. 
We ask that you'll teach it to us today through our pastor and help us remember it each and every day this week and as we continue to fellowship with each other all the time. In Christ's name we ask, amen. God bless you. You may be seated and our ushers will come forward and take our morning offering. look to God in prayer. Lord, you are beautiful to us. We thank you so much for who you are, for the beautiful world that you created and the life we have, the times we have to gather with friends and uh, to make new friends, spend time in worshiping you. We especially thank you, God, that you promised to be here with us when we gather to worship in your name. You are here today, and we thank you, God, for your presence. Forgive us, Lord, when we don't, we aren't sensitive to your presence, and we don't listen to what your Spirit has to say to us. God, we ask that you would open our hearts this morning and fill us with your presence. Help us to get past the obstacles and distractions that maybe we brought with us. And to spend this time together just simply focusing on you and being open to what you have for us today. God, again, we thank you. We we dedicate to you these tithes and offerings and ask God you would use this to the furtherance of your kingdom. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you are on the church prayer email list, you've got the good news that uh, our group has grown by one this past week. Uh, Kyle and Avina had their baby boy. And if you want to see Kyson, they didn't give me permission to say, but you could probably sneak down to the nursery and peek real quick uh, before you go home because he is in the house today. So uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun, yeah. So, I I come from a, uh, some would say an insane family, weird family. My uh, dad, my uncle, both ride motorcycles. Both of my brothers at one point rode motorcycles. Uh, When I was about sixth grade, uh, dad bought us a, a little dirt bike, and we would uh, go out in the, the country and had some trails we could ride on. We would spend, uh, in my mind, my childhood memories, we would spend every Saturday, I know it wasn't, but it felt like we spent every Saturday out riding the motorcycles in the dirt, just having a great time. I've, I've had all kinds of motorcycles through the years, from, from little bitty ones to great big ones. I've had crotch rockets, I've had cruisers, I've had all kinds of motorcycles. It's been a lot of fun. But there's been uh, periods of time where I, I didn't have one. And uh, before I got this, this last bike, I made the decision that the next time I get a motorcycle, I'm going to take the motorcycle safety class. I'd ridden the motorcycles all my life, but I never took 
the safety class. And so I got the motorcycle, and I said, all right, I'm going to keep that promise to myself. So I, I took the intermediate motorcycle safety class, and which one you could take to get your license. I already had it, so I didn't need that. But I, I took the class, and I said, you know, it, it was interesting, and it was kind of fun, so I'm going to take the advanced motorcycle safety class. And so I took, and I've actually had that one twice now, I took the advanced, not because I failed it, I just wanted to. <laughs> so I took the advanced motorcycle safety class just so I could get some, some more knowledge. And you know, it's really kind of interesting. They, they teach you lots of ways to try to stay safe. There's no way you can be guaranteed you'll be safe on the road, whether you're in a truck or a car, or a motorcycle, or just walking on the sidewalk. There's dangers all the time, but they try to teach you ways that you can watch out for, for dangers that are coming. They, they, they Actually, they, they tell you that you should, while you're driving down the, the road, or riding down the road, to, to watch for the cars on the, the intersections that come up, because as you know, sometimes people just zip through the stop sign or stop light and come in front of you. In fact, I had a, a friend this past week who was in a car and had someone run a stop sign and uh, totaled his car. He's fine, but uh, there's always a danger. But they, they warn you as you're riding your bike to watch for these I say idiots, these idiots coming from the side who, who may or may not stop. And they, they want you to be looking around to see where is your safe exit if this person pulls out in front of you. See if there's a, a route you can go that may be dodge and to keep from uh, splattering all over their hood as they pull in front of you. It's, it's, uh, it's good to keep your eyes open, whether you're walking I've, I've been, in the past when I was jogging, there was a gal who was doing her walk down the sidewalk and she had her earplugs in and she was jamming on some tunes. She had no idea who was around her. When I came jogging past, it freaked her out so much. She just screamed and hollered and, and if she had been an old person, she probably would have had a heart attack right on the spot. But she had no idea who was around her. She wasn't keeping watch on what's going on. The passage we're going to be looking at in Matthew chapter 24, starting with verse 36, is one in which Jesus tells us we need to keep watch. Now, he's not talking about keeping watch while you're driving a car or keeping watch while you're riding a motorcycle or keeping watch while you're just doing an exercise walk down the sidewalk with your earphones on. He's talking about spiritually we need to keep watch and we're going to talk about why as we look in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. And we're going to just read the first couple of verses right now. Jesus says, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. What, what things is he talking about? Well, if you've been here for the last few weeks, we've been talking about the end times verses that Jesus was uh, talking about and the disciples heard Jesus say something that made them believe that he was made them believe that the temple was going to be destroyed and they assumed that if the temple was going to be destroyed this was going to be the end of the world so they had a flurry of questions that they came to Jesus oh, when is this going to happen what's going to be signs of the end of the world and you're coming back and they had all these questions they assumed that the world was going to be coming to an end if the temple is going to be destroyed and that probably that's when Jesus would set up his kingdom on earth and he had all these questions and so Jesus starts responding to their questions and in my opinion he doesn't exactly answer the questions they were asking he had some other answers he wanted them and wanted us to know one of the the messages he had back is what he says right here no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen when the end of the world comes, when Jesus returns to set up his kingdom, even Jesus at that time, although he was God in the flesh and he was privy to the power and inspiration and abilities that none of us have, he had walked away from his godhood to become man. And even him at that point in time, he didn't know the details. No one knows the day or the hour. Only God the Father at that point knew so, 
first point, which we talked about last time, is nobody really knows. Verse 37, when the Son of Man returns, that's Jesus, when he returns to earth, it'll be like it was in Noah's day. <coughs> well, maybe you have a good memory of what it was like in Noah's day. And you, you remember who Noah was back in Genesis chapters 6, 7, 8, 9, where people on earth were, were evil. And they had been sinning. They were turning away from God. They were doing whatever they wanted to do instead of what God wanted them to do. And when God looked at the earth, he was sorry that he had created humanity. Because everybody but one, everybody but one had turned against God. But God, Noah found favor in God's sight. Because he had stayed true in his faith to God. The Bible called him righteous because of his faith. In Genesis chapter 16, verses 17 to 19, it says, God saying, Look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you, Noah. So build a boat. And scholars think it took a long, long time to build the boat. But build the boat. And then when it's time, enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons, and bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male, a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive and you alive during the flood. That's what he warned him in Genesis chapter 16. And uh, this isn't on the, going to be on the screen, but Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, it says, when everything was ready, the Lord told Noah, go get into the boat and then make sure that everybody, all the plants, not the plants, but all the animals are there, the food's there, go get in the boat. In verse 17, uh, verse 7, Genesis chapter 7, when he went into the boat to escape the flood, he and his wife and their sons and their wives with them were all kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice, and those who were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. We're not going to get into the details of the, the boat and all of that, because that's not truly the point. But Jesus is saying that in, as it was in the days of Noah, it's going to be the same way when Jesus returns. So I'm just kind of giving you a review. What isn't on, um, I think, chapter 7, verse 1 I already talked about, uh, the Lord says, get in the boat. And uh, verse 16, male and a female of each kind of animal entered, just as the God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. God told Noah, it's time, get in the boat. And when they got in the boat, they, their family and all the animals got in the boat. God closed the door of the boat, the time for safety, the time for mercy, the time for grace had come to an end. And only those who had been faithful and believed God and followed what he said were to receive his mercy at that point. Everybody else was to receive God's judgment. This one isn't in the, um, on the screen Verse 11 of chapter 7, when Noah was set 600 years old, all the underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. The time of judgment came. Now, we get into all this because Jesus said, as it was in the day of Noah, so will it be when the Son of Man returns. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up until the time Noah entered the boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came away and swept them all away. That's the way it's going to be when the Son of Man comes. People didn't know, except for Noah, because God told him. 
now's the time, get in the boat. But for the most part, it's going to be like then. The people were partying, they were going about their business, they were doing whatever they wanted. They were ignoring God. They were ignoring what God had told them. They were ignoring what, they were ignoring what God wanted of them. They did their own thing, went their own way, and just did whatever they wanted. And because they were so wrapped up in their own lives, their own sinful behavior, all of the things that they were wanting to do, they didn't know the time of judgment was right around the corner. As it was in the day of Noah, so it'll be when Jesus returns. People will be caught up in their own lives, living life however they want to live, ignoring what they knowing their hearts that God wants them to do, ignoring what, what maybe as a childhood they, they heard from the pastor or the Sunday school teacher or, or maybe what, what someone at work told them or someone at school or somewhere somehow they had heard about God, they had heard about Jesus, they had heard about God's love, but they had ignored what God wants, wanted. They rejected God's grace as it was in the day of Noah. That's the way it's going to be when the Son of Man returns. Now think about the experience of being locked out of the boat. Can you imagine that? When the torrential rains come pouring down, maybe, maybe they'd never even seen rain before then. I, I don't know back. Back in the Garden of Eden, they said that the, the mist came up from the ground and watered the earth. And we got the impression that maybe it hadn't rained before then. Maybe all this thunderstorm, was, which can be terrifying if you're not used to a thunderstorm. Maybe the thunderstorms and the rain and the floods was all new to them. They had never seen anything like this. Now, all of a sudden, the water's pouring out of the skies and the water's running up higher and higher. And the only thing anybody could do to get away from the waters to get into that huge wooden boat that's up on the side of the hill. Maybe they'd been making fun of crazy Noah for months as he was building this thing or years as he was building this thing. And now as they're rushing up to get into the boat, they find that God had sealed it shut. The time of grace had come and gone. It was time for people to receive the judgment of God. As we read through, I'm not going to read all of this, it talks about... Uh, People working together, one's taken, the other's left. Scholars debate on whether this is talking about the rapture of, of God, where God's people are being uh, taken away to be preserved, or, or maybe this is referring to the, the flood uh, of Noah, that they're being taken away because they're being washed away by the, the, the flood waters of God's judgment. Regardless, the, the point that Jesus is making, the, the, the point he wants to make in all of this, it comes in verse 42. After talking about the, the judgment, <laughs> after talking about Noah, after talking about people being washed away in judgment, perhaps, Jesus says this in verse 30, 42. So you too must Keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Noah had kept watch. Noah had been busy doing what God told him to do. He's building the boat, getting the animals ready, getting the feed ready. He had been spending all this time doing what he knew God wanted him to do. But all these other people, they didn't care what God wanted. They weren't watching. They weren't ready. So Jesus is saying, we must keep watch. Watch, because like Noah, like the people in Noah's time, we don't know 
when Jesus will return. And he goes on to, to talk about other examples. We're not going to read all of this. A, an example of a burglar coming to break into the house. And if, if the family is up and keeping an eye open, and they've got all of their security systems in place, they don't have to be afraid of the burglar because they'll, they'll be ready to uh, ward them off. Or, or maybe the example he has of a, a master who's going to be gone for a while and he's turning over his business or his farm or whatever to a trusted servant to, to take care of the place while he's gone. And the guy doesn't know when, when the master's going to be coming back. They didn't have cell phones. You couldn't text and say, hey, how's it going in Europe today? Oh, it's going great. We're having a great time. How, how are the, the cows doing? Oh, the, the cows are doing very good. They couldn't do that. They were gone. You couldn't even send a letter because they didn't have postage. There was no telephones. There was no way to communicate. All the guy back at the farm who was taking, place, taking care of the place knew was that the owner was gone, and someday he's coming back, much like we know that Jesus is gone, and someday he's coming back. And the point is, we need to keep watch. We need to be faithful. We need to be doing what we know God wants us to do so that when Jesus returns, like, like the good manager in the, the last parable here, the, the master comes back and finds out that his manager was doing what he's supposed to do, and the, the master said, great job. I'm so happy you've been taking care of my business, thank you. We are to be diligent in our faith. We are to be diligent in doing what we know God wants us to do. We are to keep watch because God wants us to remain faithful. Keep watch. A lot of you probably noticed the, the other side's kind of dirty, so I put the clean side up. But you notice the, the caution sign, right? And, and you know, what, when you see this, what does this mean? Keep, keep, keep watch. Be careful. Be careful. Somebody over here said something else. Watch your step. Watch your step. And the reason is? The floor's wet. It could be slick. And if you don't keep watch, what could happen? You could fall. You could fall. Or in this case, since the carpet actually isn't wet, if you're not keeping watch, you could trip over the stupid sign I put in the middle of the aisle, and you fall, and that in itself, the watch sign becomes a hazard. Jesus set a watch sign spiritually out for us. Jesus set this watch sign saying, I am returning until I come back. You don't know when that will be, but until I come back, I want you to remain faithful to me. I want you to be busy doing the things I have told you to do. I want you to remain solid in your faith and in your obedience reading through the message I've left for you, which is the Bible. And what we see things in the Bible like love one another as I have loved you. We see things in the Bible that says, you're the light of the world, let your light shine for all to see so they will give praise to God our Father. We see things in the Bible where he talks about going to all the world and, and spread the gospel teaching people about me and helping them to become disciples. And we see these things in the Bible. We have a really good idea what God wants us to do. We may not know when Jesus is coming back, but we know he's coming until that time. He wants us to keep watch, keep ready, always be faithful. There's the good news and the bad news to the ark 
to Noah's time. Those who were faithful were allowed into the boat before God sealed it. And, and although it, it couldn't have been all that much fun to be in a boat for a year with a whole bunch of animals and with, you know, your, your son and daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, you know, the boat's only so big, you can only get away from each other so long. And after a while, you've had all that you want of these animals and these other people in this boat. Life isn't always pleasant. But while we're waiting, we need to be faithful. We need to keep watch. So that when God sends Jesus, when he says the time is up and he's going to seal the door of mercy and not allow anyone else in to his grace. We need to be sure that we are on the right side of the faith concept. We need to make sure that we're on the, the side of faith that says, Lord, I give my life to you. And until you come back, God, I will be faithful in serving you. So that's the message this morning. That's the message I leave with you. That's the message that Jesus was giving from Matthew 24. We don't know when Jesus is going to return. What we do know is God wants us, expects us, demands us to be faithful, to keep watch, and to always be ready, whether he returns today or whether he waits another couple thousand years. Be ready to do what you can to serve God and be faithful. Let's look to God in prayer. Take a few moments and allow God's Spirit to speak further to your heart. <clears throat> God, we confess there are times we don't keep watch as well as others. Forgive us for those times, God. Help us, God, to be more faithful. Help us, God, to take seriously your call in our lives so that each day we can do what we can to follow you and to tell others about the great love you have. Help us, God, to keep watch as you've called us to do. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite the musicians to come and lead us in our closing song while they come. Let's go ahead and stand and prepare to sing.
home on the uh, live stream if you'd like to talk with me some more about receiving God's mercy. Uh, if you'd like to have prayer, just let me know. I'd be glad to get together with you and visit or pray. And let's, let's close out in prayer. God, we thank you for meeting with us here today. Thank you for the, the presence of your Holy Spirit, for allowing us to spend this time away from our normal concerns, to be calmed by your peace, to be uplifted by your joy, to be convicted by your spirit, and to receive your grace and mercy. God, as we leave this place, help us, God, to take your comfort and peace, your insight, take all of those things with us to help improve our lives, to help us be more faithful to you, and also, God, to help share your love and mercy with those around us. God, as we leave this place also, I pray your joy, your peace on each one of us. May we know your peace that passes all understanding. Now receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord be good to you and give you his peace. Go in his peace. Amen.